Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Anar and I'm a self-taught software developer. And on this channel, I aim to help you break into and grow your career in tech. Today's video is intended for people that are looking to make their tech resume better, that are new to Canada or the US, as well as people that are new to their field, looking to build a strong resume. I will also include a few points that are particularly useful for somebody with very little experience or no experience at all that are getting very few or no responses. I'm also going to give tips on how to write a resume with a neutral format that is common here in Canada and the US. This is important so recruiters don't get turned away from looking at a resume that looks like it belongs to an international applicant because sometimes international applicants do present some challenges. If there is enough interest in this video, I can do an overview of my resume which has a very high response rate and has gotten me into cool companies such as Disney and Twitter. When I was first making my resume, something that made the process easier was taking the resume of a friend that has worked well for them and using it as a template. So if you know somebody in a similar field that has a resume that gets them interviews, it's not a bad idea to use that resume as a template. Something else I did that you can benefit from is using Indeed Resume Search. Just like you can search for jobs on indeed.ca, you can search for resumes. Back when I was making my resume, this service was free, but now there is a subscription required. Definitely explore this option because you get access to resumes of people that work where you want to work, doing the job that you want to do. If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future content. Those were kind of like bonus tips for extra resources when it comes to creating your resume. Now I'm going to get into my personal tips in creating an effective resume for Canada or the US, as well as some tips to avoid creating red flags. Something I have never mentioned before is that I used to be a recruiter years ago, so I've seen my share of good and bad resumes. First tip is don't include a picture on your resume. A picture on your resume is not common in Canada and most parts of the US. This is one of those things that would turn me away from an applicant instantly because I've seen many Canadian and US resumes and none of them have a picture. So when I would get a resume with a picture, it would usually be from a foreign applicant. This not only communicates that you are a foreign applicant, but it also communicates that you haven't prepared your resume for the local labor market. It almost shows you as an applicant that's not serious and you're just trying your luck. Tip number two is going to be don't put your personal address on your resume. This is just my personal opinion. Having your address on your resume won't negatively or positively impact your job search. I just don't see any reason to put a piece of such personal information on your resume, especially when email has completely replaced mail for job related activities. Tip number three is a general resume tip. Keep your resume to one page. I often see resumes that are three pages or more. Your resume is not supposed to describe every piece of your experience in detail. You should have high level points that describe the overall contributions you made, which can then be delved deeper into in the interview. Tip number four ties into tip number three, which is avoid adding fluff to your resume. This will also help keep your resume short and concise at one page. A short and concise resume, hiring managers are more likely to read fully. A long resume full of fluff on the other hand could get skimmed over and the content that covers your core skills that you want to communicate may get skipped. The next three tips are going to be particularly effective for people that are not getting a high response rate, people without much experience, and people applying for highly competitive roles such as a junior software engineer. If this isn't your scenario, you can skip ahead. Tip number five is have your resume match the job posting that you're applying to. Essentially what you would do is look at a job posting that you are qualified for and take the requirements of the job and rephrase them as your work experience, given that you have this experience. For example, if the job description has a bullet point requiring developing software on a cross-functional team, you can rephrase this bullet point to better showcase the experience that the hiring manager is looking for. This takes more time than just submitting an unaltered resume, but even though you will submit less resumes, you will get more responses. The only reason not to do this is if your unaltered standard resume is getting a high response rate as it is. Tip number six is always include a custom cover letter. Just like tip five, alter your cover letter to show that you are a good fit for the role as much as your experience allows it. This will also increase the time it takes to apply to a role, but will at the same time increase the response rate. While tip five and six will increase the time it takes to apply to a role, it should not add more than 10 to 15 minutes per application because you're just tweaking your resume and cover letter. 
Tip number seven is if you have space to fill on your resume because you just don't have much experience, a small profile section can help do that. I said previously to avoid fluff, but this can be something optional for the recruiter to read and can help keep your resume looking full. Tip number eight is have a LinkedIn page which matches your resume and have the link to the page on your resume. This is good because it allows the recruiter to see a little bit more about you, such as if you have a professional picture on your LinkedIn. And LinkedIn will also notify you if a recruiter looks at your page. Tip number nine is have a little section on top of your resume with a bunch of keywords to get past the screening bot. This can just be a section that lists technologies you worked with in categories. For example, you could have a category for bug tracking tools where you would list all the technologies that you have worked with, such as Jira or Rike and other bug tracking tools. This way, if the screening bot is looking for the word Jira, for example, and in your bullet points where you describe your experience, you just happen not to use the word Jira, the screening bot will see it in the technology section and won't reject it, allowing the recruiter to have a chance to read it. Tip number 10 is probably the most important tip, and that is to apply to the correct roles. This isn't so much about writing your resume correctly, but more about using it correctly. Don't shoot too high or too low. You want to make sure there's a fit between your resume and the job description. If you're a junior engineer, don't apply for senior engineering roles and vice versa. It's a waste of your time. Even if you have the perfect resume, but you're missing some core requirements, you won't get hired. And the same goes for being overqualified. The resume is a tool to communicate your skill set, and the more clearly you can do so, the more likely you are to get a call back for a job that you are qualified for. This only works if you're actually qualified for the job, however. Tip number 11 is to use strong verbs. This is best demonstrated with an example. I can say that I contributed to a project in two different ways. I can say participated in development of feature X for project Y. The weak verb participated doesn't imply that I was directly responsible, worked independently, or had a big role. I can instead say led development of feature X for project Y. Just changing the word participated to led shows that I was directly responsible and that I played a significant role in the project, even though they are describing the exact same experience. When your entire resume consists of points like this, it communicates a consistent and strong message about your skills. Let me know if there's interest in a resume or cover letter template. If there is interest, I will put one together. That will wrap up today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.